That's all right. You can move. Good morning, St. Thomas. Oh, you can do better than that. Good morning, St. Thomas. If you will, take a moment and look around the room and see all the beautiful people that God's Holy Spirit sent here today to be with you. Will you do that for me, please? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Many of us may be familiar with this catchy tune. In 1986, singer-songwriter Paul Simon wrote a song about an individual in the midst of a midlife crisis, perhaps someone like you or I who lived a fairly good life but now finds himself questioning whether or not his long years of preparation for life has any substance or meaning. Did he accomplish what it was that he was created for? Will he be able to stand tall when he meets our Lord and Savior? Will he be known at that heavenly banquet with the Father? Reasonable thoughts, I think. Perhaps these are thoughts that many of us have asked ourselves at some time in the past without adequate resolve. Paul was a brilliant writer and songwriter, and he was able to express this concept through music. Some say this song originally started out to be of a fictional character, but later culminated into a sort of autobiography of his life's journey at some point, which goes to show that no matter how successful we may see ourselves, we still have doubt about our purpose and meaning in this life. The midlife crisis is a time of second-guessing about those things in life of which we feel should have been accomplished, whether it be education or a skill or the bonding with others or completing a spiritual journey. It's a season when our minds become utterly aware of the finite boundaries of our time on this planet. And suddenly, we begin to act like freshmen in college cramming for a final exam two hours later after staying out all night long partying. I'm sure some of you know what I mean. It's a period which usually begins after we have gained a little bit of life's wisdom and have begun to move away from the me stage of identity and continues until we've grown older and feel a sense of freedom to express our innermost thoughts and concerns. Usually by then, those mature thoughts have a certain amount of kindness and gentleness depending upon the life experience of the individual. Though sometimes what comes out of the mouth at this time is shocking and unexpected, but often has some elements of truth attached to it. As in Paul's song, the individual is no longer amused with dogs and the antics of a colorful little girl. He now beckons for others to move them out of his irritated sight. He's needing a protector, a helper, a bodyguard, one who will counter his shortcomings as he acknowledges that he is not fully prepared for the spiritual journey now before him, as so are the women in our gospel lesson. The ones short of oil, the ones ever so short of faith in the ability to act, the oil representing the light of God and the lamp 
the vehicle of faith, ready to burn bright when beckoned by the call of the Holy Spirit. Faith, it is an important component of our spiritual journey. When we don't have faith or the vehicle of faith, it is a tumultuous time in a time when we will need a protector and as much grace and forgiveness as possible. Some say it is the fluidity of faith which keeps us going strong. Looking back on this past week, were there times when your faith was missing or low? Were there times where you felt irritable for seemingly no reason? Or your mind began to wonder as if it had a life completely of its own? Did you begin to feel emotions and not know why you were feeling them? If so, perhaps your lamp was short on oil. Well, I've got great news for you. You're not alone. And it's okay because God puts people and systems in place to help us get through those times when the oil in our lamps are low. There's always a bodyguard standing in the wings, waiting to be sent by God, someone standing by and willing to help, even if they're unaware of their assignment. God's Holy Spirit doesn't need our permission to act upon us and move us in the path of another who needs assistance. Oh, yes, I am my brother's keeper. If you be my bodyguard, I can be your long-lost pal. I can call you Betty, and Betty, when you call me, you can call me Al. Al, the protector that voice of reason, that friend in the night. Many of you may already know how this song by Paul Simon came about, but it's worth sharing with those who haven't heard. Now at the eight o'clock service, I had this way too loud and nobody can hear me. Can you hear me? Okay. This song came about after he visited South Africa and decided to integrate some of their cultural music into his composing. If you listen closely, you can hear the Afrocentric themes mixed in with the American style of rhythm. The lyrics came about after attending a party with his wife Peggy and meeting a French composer who mistakenly called Paul Al and his wife Betty instead of Peggy. Understanding the complexities of life and the challenges that we all face, and in trying to relate to one another, Paul took that odd encounter and sang about the love rather than names, which is what's really important. Love, connectability, and support for one another. The ability to look beyond our societal expectations and to be that shield of protection, that voice of reason, that oil lamp of hope and faith, knowing all along that it is not us but a manifestation of the Holy Spirit through us which acts as the protector. So if you be my bodyguard, I can be your long lost pal. I can call you Betty, and Betty, when you call me, you can call me Al. In other words, you don't have to get my name right for love to flow. And I don't need oil from your lamp in a crisis. But it's comforting to know that when we're in need of protection, God's Holy Spirit will send a bodyguard. So remember that. And don't send them away. Our souls may depend on it. Amen. Amen.